Hello friends from ABC Latino, my name is Elena Valencia, I'm a psychologist and a mental health counselor. And I'm here today to talk to you about substance abuse. Substance abuse is defined as the consumption of any type of illegal drug or the consumption of alcohol or any medicine or substance that, even if legal, is taken without control or in an appropriate way. Among the signs and symptoms that we can find, there is the increase in the state of alert, having red eyes, dilated pupils, and this depends on the type of drug or if it is alcohol, difficulty with concentration. When someone is under the influence of a drug or alcohol, the person might tend to get involved in high-risk activities. This person might have problems accomplishing their responsibilities. If we're talking about teenagers, they might have trouble finishing their homework. If the person is working, he or she might not present to work, and this is going to bring problems with the family. A study made in 2015 from the Epidemiology Department from the University of Texas found out that the Hispanic migrants have less issues with drugs and alcohol than the general American population. But the study also found out that the younger these people migrate to the United States, the higher the risk they have of consuming drugs and alcohol. In our migrant population, especially teenagers, there are many risk factors. The fact of migrating to a new country and leaving behind everything we know in a process of our lives or a part of our lives when we are creating our identity is a risk factor if we're talking about alcohol and drugs. Why? Because this process can be traumatic not necessarily because there's something happening to us or something bad happening to us, but the fact of having to leave your house, the place, the country you know, of going through this migrating process of not knowing where we're we going to arrive many times, that can be considered a traumatic event in the life of a person, especially a teenager. And talking about risk factors, we might also say that when they arrive to the United States, they might have problems with the new language, they might have problems adjusting to the new country or the new place of residence. And many times these young people have been living with their grandparents or friends of their parents and they arrive here to a new world. Many times they are now living with their parents, but parents might be people not so close to them, so they are really getting to know them. This creates a risk factor because they don't have a sense of identity when they go to school many times among the classmates or friends, they feel that need to fit in, of finding a way to identify with them. This can create an environment in which they get involved in certain activities just to fit in with the classmates or friends. Also, they might be feeling lonely because they are not close to their group of friends. Probably in their country of origin, they had cousins and a lot of friends from school, and they arrived to this new world where they might not be able to communicate too well, and this might become a risk factor or something that makes it difficult for them to build uh, positive social networks. A way to prevent this situation or to focus on this situation is thinking how can we build those relations from home, what can we do? So, for example, one alternative is controlling but not forbidding. What does this mean? When we have a teenager arriving to our house and we are just starting to live with them because maybe we don't live together since they were little kids, and they are learning to get adjusted. So, so a key factor for us is gonna be communication. 
We all need to have clarity on which are the limits, what are the rules of the house. So it is important to sit down and have a talk about this with them. It would be really easy to say just, these are the things you can do, these are the things you can't. But let's try to do it in a way that that is a conversation and that we can clarify why, what risks are we trying to prevent, what do we expect from them, and do it in a conversation in which trust can flow because they're coming from another environment and don't really understand that well what is happening around them. So we can help them adapt better if they know what we're expecting from them. We're talking about teenagers that are constantly looking at what we are doing. When we talk to them, we can tell them stories about neighbors or friends or family who have gone through issues with alcohol and drugs. And that way we can explain them what are the risks, not as a way of scaring them, not trying to make them feel scared or that we're trying to scold them, but as a way of giving them examples of the risks they can have and the consequences there could be it must be a topic that you speak about at home. It's something we have to have present and we need to maintain good communication. When we lead by example, but not only through stories, but also with our behavior. So if we're asking them for communication, we must learn how to talk to them and learn to know them. They are young people arriving to our homes and many times we don't really know them. We might have spoken on the phone for years before they arrived to our country. If you have talked with your son for a long time, but he's just arriving, it's the time to give yourselves the time to know each other. How are we going to manage this communication? How can we create a better conversation? It's also very important to be connected with the school. The school is where they're going to spend most of their time. So we should know who are they sharing time with, what are their schedules. Also very important to know what is expected from them at school. So one of the risk factors is when we come to a new country and we face so many uncertainties about our future, where are we going to live, who are we going to live with, what is going to happen with our lives, as well as the migratory status. So one of the things you can do is open up this conversation with the school. If we know what is expected from them, what do they need in order to get their graduation? What classes should they take? What are the schedules they're managing? This is going to help us have a communication among all of us and build a community. And this way, when we create a community, then we are all educating these teenagers so they have a place to go and someone they can talk to who listens. So these conversations are very important. This is the information we wanted to bring to you today about substance abuse and the relevance of this topic with our young migrants. If you want to have more information, you can contact Avesa Latino. Thank you.